What's going on you guys, it's Royce Jacob, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Stock Talk, the series I make whenever I feel it's necessary where we cover some exciting news and price action in regard to some of the stocks we've been talking about on the channel. In today's case, we are focusing on our COVID related biotech stocks, very bittersweet day within this sector following some great news from Moderna. So I'm not actually going to touch on Moderna today, I did just upload that solo analysis covering them. So if you want to hear my take on Moderna, go check out that video. But in this video, we're just going to be taking a look at Novio, Novavax, Sorrento, Vaxart and BioNTech. Um, a lot of red within the sector. Surprisingly, Novavax uh, saw some green today, but a lot of red in, across this sector. Um, not much news where we will cover a brief article that kind of aligns with my thoughts on this. But we're not going to cover any news. I think the primary reason we saw red across the sector is just because Moderna released some banging news and these are competitors. OK, so although this this sector, as I say, a lot of the time does move in unison, um, when Moderna, like like today, is a great example of what happens when one of these players, when one of the competitors within this space releases very good news. Okay, so we did see red across the board. We will touch on this. Before we dive into the article, I will ask you guys to please give the video a like if you do go on to get value from it, or if you are invested in any of the stocks we're talking about today. Subscribe to the channel if you are new and check out my complete portfolio and daily newsletter. First link in the description if you're interested. All right, so again, we will get into these charts, but I want to read you guys this article first. All right. Nasdaq rises on Moderna coronavirus vaccine hopes at Novio's expense. The COVID-19 pandemic is responsible for most of the uncertainty facing investors right now, even though the Nasdaq composite has gained ground during the global health crisis. Large segments of the U.S. economy could remain under threat until a permanent solution to the coronavirus is developed and widely distributed. Investors are therefore looking to pharmaceutical and biotech companies in hopes that one or more will provide the tools needed to beat the pandemic. On Wednesday morning, the Nasdaq Composite and Nasdaq 100 indexes both rose, largely because of the favorable news from Moderna on the vaccine front. However, for every winner, there are losers and rival Anovio Pharmaceuticals was among the morning's worst performers. Okay, so again, uh, the news from Moderna today did spark uh, a lot of green within the general equity market. So S&P, Dow, the Nasdaq were all up. Um, because again, these are the save the world companies. When we have a vaccine, we a vaccine is directly correlated with a sense of normalcy okay sense of going back to what what once was obviously there will that that's never going to happen that's um, not even within the picture but what we perceive to be the new normal um but the, the with a vaccine comes a very confident sense that we return to to pretty much like pretty close to what we had at one point okay so you're betting on optimism you're betting on um the human species advancing as a species when you're betting on these vaccine companies and again great news for moderna these like that's the unfortunate thing if you are invested in a lot of other players in the sector like I am. Although I am invested in Moderna, portfolio definitely took a hit today. And again, this is just a great example of what we see when um, when Moderna, in this case, releases great news that, again, is great news. This is great for humanity that Moderna is making this headway and they are moving on to the phase three clinical trials. Huge deal, a lot like 30,000 patients. This is a huge trial. And this is a pivotal point, pivotal point for um, for humans, for the human species, for our, our psyche, for the economy as a whole, especially. Um, so it's great news. But again, it, it does come, it is bittersweet if you are invested within this sector. And uh, again, we saw some right today, but the NASDAQ and, and Moderna isn't the only reason. It's a big reason. It was probably the primary driver behind the NASDAQ and, and general equities um, green this morning, uh, although they did pull back a little bit. But another reason is because um, who was a Goldman Sachs reported earnings and, and crushed on earnings, which I will touch on on Friday because those earnings, that earnings report is sketchy. Don't just believe the numbers. Um, I see some sketchiness within that earnings report, which I will talk about on Friday. But again, I want to focus on these biotechs here. OK, so why Moderna stock is on the rise? We're not going to touch on that again. If you guys want to know my take on Moderna, go watch the last video. Um, bad news for rivals. OK, so. What's good news for Moderna, however, wasn't good news for some of the other companies vying for the position in the fight against COVID-19. Novio's stock has also soared in 2020 due to its coronavirus efforts, but just uh, but just now the stage belongs to Moderna and Novio shareholders weren't celebrating as the stock was down. However, this race doesn't necessarily have to have just one winner, which is an important thing to keep in mind, okay? Moderna and Novio are taking different approaches to helping the human body protect itself against the COVID-19 against the COVID-19. Innovio's use and Innovio uses this guy needed to proofread this one more time. Innovio uses DNA plasmids to encourage cells to create defenses, while Moderna uses messenger RNA or mRNA, hence Moderna. 
Researchers may eventually find that the best solution includes vaccines that use a combination of strategies to provide more complete protection. However, combination studies would have to be conducted to verify that even successful vaccines don't end up diminishing each other's effectiveness. Okay, so remember that you guys moderna is just a single company although they may like at some point maybe they have the ip they if they do find a 100 percent viable and effective vaccine then they might subcontract a bunch of these other players to um, manufacture that same vaccine but again maybe Inovio, maybe novax maybe some of these other companies who are using different technologies or even the same technology come up like just come out come out with uh with an equally successful or um if not more effective vaccine okay so that's always a possibility Again, this is a volatile sector. This is a crazy fast moving. As far as biotechs are concerned, this is about as fast and wild as biotechs can move. Again, crazy times, um, but just stay optimistic. I, I do still hold positions in all the companies we're talking about today. I haven't just completely given up. Although I am the most bullish on Moderna at this point, just because they're objectively in the lead. Um, I am still bullish and uh, still confident that these could at least, at the very least, see a bounce. And uh, let's move into the charts right now. So we can just get straight into it. All right, again, kicking it off with Novio. We did see Novio closing the day down 6.5%. Uh, can't see what after hours was, but they do have, uh, okay, that's that's not in the future, Never mind. So Novio, what is Novio's market cap currently? TradingView just updated this. Okay, sorry, I'm just, I literally just saw this update. So Novio's market cap is now sitting at 3.8 billion. Again, Moderna, you guys, just today crossed $30 billion market cap. Moderna's a huge company, so it's like, oh, it's like eight times the size of Novio. So just keep that in mind. This is a way smaller company. Imagine Novio does find a successful vaccine how much that could impact the price of the single share, okay? So Inovio, from a technical perspective, it is still following this uh, kind of this downtrend right here. I just drew this downtrend and it doesn't have much, um, there's not much to look at here. There's not like, aside from this and this right here that just sets uh, the other day, that's only like, that's the only reason I drew this downtrend in. But as long as Inovio is beneath this, I am uh, from a technical perspective bearish. If Inovio does cross above this, I, I will definitely get bullish and believe that we could see another test to this upper channel, which I will get to. But then this bottom channel is, is as long as it's above this, I, I'm at least confident that we could see more upper momentum if it does fall below this significantly. So if it, if say if Inovio comes back down to $20, that is very bearish in my eyes from a technical perspective. So hopefully that doesn't happen, but let's go to like the three month right here so I can show you guys this top trend line. So this top trend line, if we zoom out, does date back all the way to uh, to the end of March. So a high at the end of March, March 30th. And then I use this high um, at the end of April as well. And then obviously this high back here that it said at the end of June. Okay, so this I can see as a pretty stable trend line. If it does, if it does choose to break out of this lowering trend and just try to stay back within this channel again, which hopefully it does. Again, I am optimistic, but um, I do think it could come up to retest this trend line maybe hit forty dollars again you guys it's hard to it's hard to say technically but um because this this sector is so currently based on fundamentals and again the news from moderna is really a curveball like this can completely um, this completely changed my mind honestly on a lot of these players and again it is interesting to see what happens like we knew this was going to happen at some point um but it finally did happen and it it's definitely dampened uh, my bullishness, my bull, my bull argument for a lot of these stocks, but I do still think there's potential. I do still think that news from Moderna will drive optimism from from other investors to uh, get invested and get capital flowing into this sector. So just again, always as always, guilty by association in a good way. I do think we could see these stocks at the very least bounce. I think they will bounce. Maybe they'll go sideways until they release some more good news. If they release good good news like really solid news, obviously they'll pop up and that's just the game. That's just this sector. Okay. But from a technical perspective, it's kind of hard to tell. Um, again, I'm, I'm still holding a Novio. I'm still holding my position, but at the moment it is a little tough to tell what's going on. As always, I'll keep you guys posted. Um, very exciting times in the sector, red or green. Um, it's very exciting times nonetheless. Okay. So that said, let's move to Novavax. Novavax is an interesting case because they, uh, they did see some green today. Okay. Which come, which, which kind of discredits the theory that if one wins, they all lose. Because again, Novavax didn't release any good news today. They they just happened to go up, and that is also a signal to me that technicals are very are definitely playing a role. Novavax has has seen such bullish momentum, just 
over the course of this pandemic. Obviously, as the company is working on a stock, let's take a quick look. I like this. I like this new trading view format. I'm stoked for this. Okay. Um, where are we at? We're at 6.4 billion market cap right now. So bigger than Novio, significantly smaller than Moderna still. Um, Novavax, again, they did recently get uh, introduced or inducted into Operation Warp Speed with a huge deal, $1.6 billion deal from the US government. That's nothing to shy away from. Um, so I'm still, I mean, I'm still bullish on Novavax. It is following this upward channel pretty nicely right here. So I still think that Novavax will just continue to, to follow this upward channel. And um, it is bouncing right around this line that I drew here. Um, not going to go back in the, into the historical data. This, I think it was a few years ago that was the reason that I drew this one here. But it is bouncing off that. Uh, it has bounced that off that a few times, so it's definitely a line of resistance. If it does, it does need to cross back above this line of resistance, this baseline of resistance. And I do think it will and, and begin to follow this channel. And again, I'm still bullish. I'll, I'll keep saying it until it happens because I think it will happen. Always remember, you guys. This could very well not happen. I don't know, but my money's on it. I think Novavax will hit 150 over the course of the of the next month. Okay, so my money's on it. Remember that. Um, my as of, as of right now, this is looking good to me. My opinion is unchanged. All right, so poor Sorrento, man. This one kind of broke my heart. Okay, so Sorrento, again, Sorrento taking a multi pronged approach. They're working on a treatment. They're working on a test kit. They're working on a vaccine. Um, again, vaccine. I'm a little skeptical, but again, like. These companies are competent at what they do, okay? So it's always possible that they could come out of the woodwork and create a vaccine. I'm a lot more bullish on Sorrento specifically for its treatment and test kit uh, aspect because there's not a lot of huge players working on that, okay? So Sorrento is currently sitting at a market cap of $1.3 billion, still a very small company, even compared to the smaller players in the vaccine space. It's a very, uh, it's a small company. That is a small company in relative to almost the entire market. Okay, so Sorrento did break... <laughs> did sadly break below this channel that I was like was looking so solid in my eyes um, so it broke below this channel once it did that it absolutely tanked it fell off a cliff um, which again super super bummed to see that I did have a solid Sorrento position so obviously portfolio hurt but I was so confident in this trend line it was just looking so steady and it is it's definitely a bummer that I broke this trend line um, so if it if it goes below this if it goes below this point at about I mean, that's a pretty wide range. You know what, let's, let's zoom in, zoom in. Sorry about that, zoom in a little bit. What is that at? So that is around like the six, I mean, we're pretty close to that. So it's like 630. Um, if Sorrento does break below this, this trend line, which is a new trend line I just drew today, which is like a very conservative trend line. Um, again, 17% down is, is a significant drop. So it's surprising to me considering Okay, they didn't like no bad news was released. This was just strictly technicals. I'm very confident it is, and this is a, another point as to as to why technicals do play a big role in today's market. Okay, so it broke below this trend line. Once it did that, it absolutely collapsed because it did break a, a very stable trend line that it was holding for a while. So that's that's definitely a bummer. Um, I can't imagine, I can't imagine Sorrento. Uh, continues to fall again because they they're making pretty good progress within the space not a lot of news and again this this sector is very you would like this investors want news especially in this market they want things that things to happen fast and again this is this is biotech this is pharmaceuticals things don't happen every day but um again i i'm still bullish on sorrento even though it may not look great um, i do still think what i think might happen is that they could come up here and use what was this line of support as a line of resistance. So it might come up and bounce off this $8 region. Um, if it comes back up to $8, we'll, we'll really have to see from there. If it does bounce off that, then I know that, it, that it's using this as a line of resistance. And I will likely uh, reduce my position a little bit. But if it's able to break back above this and get back into this channel, then I will um, once again get bullish. Again, you guys, it's so subjective. All of these positions are so subject to news, good news, bad news, whatever. So just keep that in mind. I'm just letting you guys know what I'm thinking generally from a technical perspective. RSI is very low on all of these. I forgot to mention that. Um, I'm Again, I'm just looking at trend lines. Trend lines have played the most, uh, the most crucial and effective role. And they're so simple to look at, okay? So again, RSI is curling up. I, I think the same thing. I'm pretty sure it's the same on all of these, maybe except Novavax. But these all saw significant corrections today. You're, it's, it's pretty obvious you're going to see a very low RSI. So, um, I mean, that's good. We'll probably see a bounce. Again, we'll see a bounce at the very least, I think. Um, but we'll just have to see. Okay, so Vaxart. Vaxart is, is looking... 
I mean, this was obvious that this was going to happen in my mind. I did talk about significantly reducing my position um, in the newsletter yesterday. So I did significantly reduce my position in Vaxart after this high. It's just, again, it cleared past this, this line of uh, this trend line or this line of resistance support, whatever it is now, um, yesterday. So, I mean, we saw two consecutive great days in a row. It's not often that you see a run like that without at least somewhat of a pullback. So it is pulling back. It is bouncing nicely. It actually closed the day like right on this trend line, right at its previous high at about like 1440. Okay, so if it breaks below this, then we have entered a downtrend in Sorrento. And I wouldn't be surprised to see it come back down to maybe like where it gapped up here around like the 12, like 1240 region. Um, so we might see a pullback to there. Uh, but again it's it's so subjective to news and and what happened like how this impacts investor psyche so i'm just keeping an eye on it um, as, if it stays within this region and goes sideways then that that does make me more bullish that it could see another move up and if it does break above this line again it's 1640 again now now it has to break past its previous high so if it does break past its previous high at about seven say if it gets to 1740 i do think we we could see a move significantly up to like significant move up to about 21 dollars. okay so let's take a look at um at their market cap after today so they're sitting at about exactly one billion dollar market cap give or take um Still a small company, okay? So roughly the same size as Sorrento as a vaccine company. Vaxart recently initiated into Operation Warp Speed. So we'll see what happens here. Again, this is still a very bullish chart. The short term is, is a little bearish. And again, I'm, I'm personally still figuring out how I want to grasp the news. And, and only time will tell, to be honest, of how this Moderna news will, um, if it will have a lasting impact on the, on the sector in a negative way, or if it will draw more attention to the sector and cause more capital inflow, which will inflate a lot of these stocks. So we'll just have to see, finish it off by touching on uh, BioNTech BNTX. So BioNTech is still like not much here. I still think it'll follow this sector. Uh, Stochastic RSI is curling up nicely, which does make me think it'll on an hourly at least, which does make me think it could see a bounce. Um, the traditional RSI is pointed down though. So we'll have to see there, but again, just following this general trend line, uh, at, at the wor worst case scenario in my mind is it comes and bounces off, off this, uh, lower line of support at about $75. Um, best case scenario is we do see a bounce and it comes back up to retest this upper line of support, you guys. But for full transparency, I did, I did slightly reduce. I mean, my Vaxar position is pretty small, so I'm not, I'm not like, my financial well-being is by no means relying on Vaxart's performance, but um, I mean, we'll just we'll really just have to see. It's kind of hard for me to articulate what I'm thinking right now, just because it's so um, it is so subject to change, especially after this news from Moderna, you guys. So I still do hold positions in all of these. I'll close it off there um, with Vaxart. I or, or sorry with Biontech. We could we could very well see this come up and retest this again this is a solid channel just keep an eye on these channels you guys i do recommend um, if you don't have trading view just go on trading view and start looking at these at, from this perspective draw your own trend lines draw what you believe to be good trend lines and um, just keep an eye on those and definitely use those because again more traders are entering the market this is becoming a market of traders that is that is catalyzed by news so just keep that in mind keep an eye on these trend lines and um, always do your own research guys always do your own digging this is just my perspective and again it's kind of hard to tell right now where this is very new territory it's very uncharted territory so just make sure you're learning every day you're take um, you're really you're really being mindful of of what news is doing to other stocks of what news is doing to those stocks so um yeah just keep that in mind and we'll close it there guys again if you want to know exactly how i'm trading these positions exactly what my positions are in these companies um, check out my complete portfolio daily newsletter first link in the description exactly as it states it's a complete breakdown of my entire portfolio um, along with that i do send out a daily newsletter talking about the trades i made that day rationalizing my thoughts and giving me my thoughts in real time about the markets and just what i'm thinking um, in general okay so check that out if you are interested if not no worries at all but until next time guys always remember take action make waves peace all right later later